Hey guys, I'm T, and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Keeping it casual today as I show you how to make this cute modern sweater. There's three quarter length sleeves, a really cute stitch, and this exaggerated collar that reminds me of something ancient. Love it. Speaking of love, we've got hundreds of modern crochet designs for you to love, with more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, there's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on with the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 3 yarn will work, but I used a total of 900 grams of yarn, and that's 1,000 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you did any Black Friday shopping. I didn't do too much, but did get some snacks and some yarn online. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using two stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. slip stitch, and single crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but we can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 3 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 5mm hook, and we're all going to start by making an odd number chain that reaches from the top of our shoulder to just about 2 inches underneath our bust. So I'm going to start by making a chain that's 13 and a half inches, or 34 centimeters. That's going to be a chain of 53 for me. Right, so now that we have our chain, we can get started on our first row, which is going to be a trinity stitch row. So what we're going to do is start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain 1. Now that chain 1 doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to be inserting with a single crochet. So we're going to bring our hook down into that second chain from our hook, and insert our hook. We're going to yarn over, and pull through. Once we have those two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, and pull through both of those loops, and that is our first single crochet. Now to get started on our trinity stitch, we're going to start by inserting our hook into that same chain that we just single crocheted into. So we're going to insert our hook into that chain, we're going to yarn over, and pull through. We should have two loops on our hook, and we ultimately want to have four, so we're going to be doing the same thing into the two following chains as well. So start by inserting your hook into that next chain, we're going to yarn over, pull through, now we have one, two, three loops on our hook, and we're going to do that once more into that following chain. So insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through. We now have one, two, three, four loops on our hook, so all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through all four of those loops, and we should have one loop left on our hook. Now to close off our first trinity stitch, all we're going to do is do a chain one, and now our first one is all finished. Let's get started on the next one. For the second trinity stitch, and all of the trinity stitches after this, we're going to start by inserting our hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch was worked into. So as you guys can see, this is the stitch that my previous one was in. So I'm going to start by inserting my hook into there, yarn over, and pull through. Now again, we want to end up having four loops on our hook, so into that following chain, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, and then we should have three loops on our hook, so we're going to be doing one more into that following chain. So insert, yarn over, pull through to get four loops on our hook, and then from here, just like the last one, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four of those loops, and then do a chain up of one to close off a second trinity stitch. And this is what we should have. 
Now for the remainder of this row, it's going to be a repeat of that previous trinity stitch that we just did. So let's just do the next one together again. So to do this just a little bit quicker, we're going to start by inserting our hook into that same stitch that our previous trinity stitch was worked into. So we're going to insert our hook into that chain, yarn over, and pull through. We're also going to be inserting our hook into that next chain. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through to have three loops on our hook, and we want to have just one more. So insert your hook into that following chain, yarn over, pull through. Should have four loops on our hook. So from here, just yarn over and pull through all four of those loops and close off our third trinity stitch with a chain one. Let's just do one more and then let you guys do the rest of this row on your own. So just as a reminder, we're going to start by inserting our hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch was worked into. So we're going to insert and pull through to have two loops on our hook. Insert your hook into that next chain and pull through to get three loops on our hook. And then into that following chain, pull through to get four loops on our hook. And from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four of those loops, and then finish off every trinity stitch with a chain one. And we're going to continue this pattern, making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left. And then I'll show you how we're going to close off this row. All right, so we have just made our way all the way down with our trinity stitches, and we should have two chains left, and now we're going to close off this row together. So it's going to start off the same way that we have done all of our other trinity stitches. So since we already did our chain one, I'm going to start by inserting a hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitches worked into. So insert, pull through. Insert your hook into that following chain, which should be the second to last chain. Yarn over pull through, and then also insert your hook into that next chain, which should be the last chain in our row. Yarn over, pull through. We should have four loops on our hook now, so yarn over, pull through all four loops. Now just for the last ones, now that we've pulled through all four, instead of doing a chain one, we're going to single crochet into that same last stitch that we're currently worked into so that we can have a nice and even edge. So from here, we're going to insert our hook into that same last chain with a single crochet. And now our row number one is complete. Now our row two and all the other rows are going to be a repeat. So let's just get that started off with each other. We're going to start with the chain one and flip our work. Now to start off every row, we're going to do a single crochet into the first stitch. So start by finding that first stitch and then single crochet. And now to get started on our first trinity stitch, we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch that we have or the stitch that we just inserted our single crochet into. So we're going to insert, pull through, and then we should have two loops on our hook. We're going to insert our hook into that following stitch, pull through, should have three loops on our hook, and then into that following stitch as well because we need four loops on our hook, pull through, and now that we have those four, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four of those loops, leaving just one loop left on our hook. And then just to finish off our trinity stitch, we're going to do a chain one, and then we can move on to the next one. So to do the second trinity stitch, we're going to start by inserting a hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch is worked into. So we're going to insert a hook into there and pull through, leaving two loops on our hook. We're going to insert a hook into that following stitch, yarn over, pull through, leaving three loops on our hook, and then into that following stitch as well, yarn over, pull through, leaving four loops on our hook. From here, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all four, do a chain one to close off the stitch, and continue to do our trinity stitches, making our way all the way down until we have just two stitches left, because I wanna close this row off with you guys just once more. All right, so we're nearly finished up with our row two, and we're just going to do our last trinity stitch off with each other. So we just finished off our last one with a chain one, and just to get started on the last one, we're going to insert our hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into. Yarn over, pull through. Should have two loops left. So into that second to last, we're going to insert, pull through, leaving us three loops on our hook. Then also into that last stitch, which a quick tip, 
The last one can look like it's tucked in, but you just want to make sure that you're having two because that's what we need to finish off this row. So into that last stitch, go ahead and insert your hook, pull through, giving us four loops on our hook. And from here, we're going to yarn over, pulling through all four of those loops, leaving just one loop left on our hook. And we're going to close off this last stitch, always with a single crochet into that same last stitch. So insert your hook with one single crochet. And now this row is all finished up. And now from here, all we're going to do is keep repeating our Trinity stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we get the shoulder portion that we need. So placing the first row just about two inches past the tip of our shoulder and then continuing our Trinity stitch until we're about one inch away from the base of our neck. I'm just gonna get this next row started off with you guys and let you guys do the rest on your own. So let's do a chain one, flip our work and start by inserting our hook into that first stitch with just one single crochet and then to do our trinity stitch, insert your hook into that same stitch that our single crochet is in, pull through, into that next stitch, pull through, and then also into that following stitch, pull through, giving us four loops on our hook. All we're gonna do is yarn over, pull through all four, and then chain one, and then continue our trinity stitches, making our way all the way down, remembering that we are going to end the last trinity stitch with a single crochet. I'll meet you guys back once we have the shoulder portion all finished up. All right, so I am back with my shoulder portion and I ended up having a total of 22 rows. Now my width is just about six inches or 15 centimeters and now we're going to start working on the neckline. So what we're first going to want to do is insert our stitch marker into an even numbered stitch from the top. And the top is going to be the end that's opposite from our working yarn. And just to let you guys know, I have inserted my stitch marker into the 20th stitch from the top. And this gap is just about five inches or 12 centimeters. Now this is going to be where our collar is and we do want a longer collar. So just as a really quick sizing tip, I actually inserted my stitch marker into a stitch that's just about one inch beneath the base of my neck. And from here, we're going to do more Trinity stitches working our way across our chest. So just to do this first row off with you guys, since we should have been along the bottom, we're going to do our Trinity stitches, making our way all the way up until we have two stitches right before our stitch marker. All right, so we have just made our way all the way down with our Trinity stitches, nothing fancy, and we have two stitches right before our stitch marker. Now we are going to close off our Trinity stitch the same way that we've been doing. I just wanted to remind you guys, so we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases. So all we're going to do is insert our hook into that last stitch that our previous Trinity stitches worked into, pull through into that second to last stitch that we have, insert, pull through, and then into that last stitch that we have, it should be the stitch right before our stitch marker, insert and pull through. Now we should have four loops on our hook, so yarn over, pull through all four of those loops, and since this is the last trinity stitch that we have in this row, we're going to single crochet into that same last stitch, and that is it. From here, just chain one, flip our work, and then do another trinity stitch row, and that's it. We're gonna keep repeating this row with no increases and no decreases, until we get just about one inch past the base of our neck. And then I'll meet you guys back along the top right here to show you guys how we're going to do the other shoulder portion. So I am back and I have just finished up working my way across my chest. Now I have a total of 41 rows and my total width is just about 12 and a half inches or 32 centimeters. And now from here, we're just going to do the same shoulder portion that we started this off with we're gonna to need to make a chain. And the chain that we're going to make is for the same amount of stitches that we skipped right before we got started on our neckline. So if you guys have my numbers, I skipped a total of 20 stitches over here. So along this end, I'm going to make a chain of 20. And now that we have our chain, we're just going to do our Trinity stitch, making our way all the way down for the same amount of rows that we have for this shoulder portion with no increases and no decreases. So I'm just gonna do the first one off with you guys. So right after our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off with the second chain from our hook, insert with the single crochet, and then we can get started with our trinity stitch. So start by inserting your hook into that same stitch that our single crochet is into, pull through. We need four loops on our hook, so we're gonna insert our hook into that following chain, pull through, and then one more into that following chain, pull through. And once we have our four loops on our hook, yarn over, 
pull through all four and then close this trinity stitch with a chain one and that is basically it just make your way all the way down with our trinity stitch just remembering that we are going to close every trinity stitch row with a single crochet and i will meet you guys back once we have the entirety of this shoulder portion all finished up all right so i am back with my other shoulder portion once i have the same amount of rows as the first shoulder that we did i did do a chain up of one and cut and now my front panel is all finished now my total width is just about 19 inches or 48 centimeters now and what we're going to do is make one more panel that is exactly the same and once we have that all finished up i will meet you guys back so we can see in the shoulders all right so now that we have both of our panels all finished up we're ready to seam the shoulder so what we're going to do now is start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and back panel once when our hook is in through there we're going to be inserting our yarn onto our hook we're going to pull through and then do a chain up of one to secure and we're just going to single crochet our way across working in through both the front and the back panel so we're going to start by putting one single crochet into that first side row that we have which this is mine right here so i'm going to insert my hook into there i'm going to find that same side row within the back panel and insert my hook into there and all we're going to do is single crochet them together so yarn over pull through yarn over and pull through two and now our first single crochet seam is all finished up let's do this again start by finding that next side row that we have within the front panel this is mine right here so i'm going to insert my hook and then i'm going to find that same side row within the back panel and this is mine right here i'm going to insert my hook into there and then single crochet them together and let's just do one more find that next side row within the front panel this is mine so i'm going to find that top loop and insert and then insert your hook into that side panel within the back loop this is mine right here insert and then single crochet them together and we're going to keep doing this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into do a chain up a one and cut and then repeat everything that we just did here on the other side So now that our shoulders are all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our side. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out, meaning the seam that we have for the shoulder is faced out because we want all of the seams to be along the inside once we flip it right side out. From there, we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into any stitch from the top where we want our armhole to start. And I've inserted my stitch marker into the 25th stitch from the top, and this is just about 6 inches or 15 centimeters. And now from here, we're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel and then we're going to be doing a single crochet seam until we reach our stitch marker now to get started on the seam we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitches then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook pull through and then do a chain up of one to secure and just to do the first few we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch into the front panel and then also find that first stitch into the back panel and then we're going to single crochet them together now let's do this again insert your hook into that next stitch into the front panel into that next stitch into the back panel and then single crochet them together and then that's it we're going to continue to do this until we reach our stitch marker do a chain up one and cut and then once we have that do the same thing that we just did here on the other side all right so now that everything is all seamed up we're ready to get started on our collar so what we're going to do is first make sure that our work is flipped right side out meaning that all of our seams are along the inside and then along the collar we're just going to do a single crochet row making our way all the way around so just to show you guys i'm going to start by inserting my hook into this stitch right here you guys can really insert your hook into anywhere you want because it's all going to come around full circle anyways but i'm just going to insert my yarn onto my hook pull through do a chain up of one to secure and then all i'm going to do is put one single crochet into every stitch and then once we reach these side rows just put one single crochet into every side row now since i'm near this corner i'm just going to do the first few single crochets off with you guys so i'm going to start by finding that first stitch and insert my hook with a single crochet and continue to put one single crochet into every stitch until we reach our first side row all right so i've made my way down to my first side row right over here and just to show you guys we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side row so start by finding that first one this is mine right here this gap so i'm going to insert my hook into that gap 
with one single crochet. And just do the next one. I'm going to find that next side row. This is my next side row right here. I'm going to insert my hook into that top gap with another single crochet. And that's it. We're just going to continue to put one single crochet into every side row and then one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up and around. We're going to slip stitch into that chain space that we made when we started off the single crochet row, and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so our single crochet row is all finished up, and now we're going to start working on the length of our collar. So I need my collar to be just about four inches or 10 centimeters. So I'm gonna start off by making a chain of 18. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert our hook with a slip stitch. So start by inserting your hook into that chain we're going to yarn over and pull through everything that's on our hook. And a quick tip that I have for slip stitches is make sure that once when you're done with your stitch, you aren't tugging too tightly on your working yarn, otherwise the following rows are going to be really difficult to work into. So let's just do the next one as well. Start by inserting your hook into that following chain, yarn over, pull through everything, and don't tug on your working yarn, just insert your hook into that next stitch. So insert, and pull through and continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. All right, so we have just made our way all the way down, putting one slip stitch into every chain, and now we need to connect it into the base. So what we're gonna do is start by finding that next available stitch that we have into the base, and we're gonna slip stitch into there. So this is mine. All I'm gonna do is insert my hook into there, yarn over and pull through everything to connect this first row to the base. Now from here, we do need to work our way up to the next row. So we're gonna start by slip stitching into that next stitch into the base. Flip our work. And now the rest of this is going to be more slip stitches, but now within the back loops so that we get some really nice ribbing. So to do this next one, we're gonna find the last stitch from our previous row and we're gonna insert our hook into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. And then we're gonna yarn over, pull through everything. Now there's our first back loop slip stitch. Let's do one more. Into that next stitch, we're gonna find that back loop, insert your hook into there, yarn over and pull through everything. And that is it. We're going to continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and I will meet you back at the end of this row. All right, so now that we are at the end of our row two, we're just gonna work our way up to the next row, do back loop slip stitches on back and then we will connect it into the base together once more. So from here, we're going to chain one and flip our work. Start by finding that first stitch from our previous row, then insert your hook into that back loop, pull through everything, remembering not to tug tightly right after we finish a stitch, and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. All right, so now that we've put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, we're gonna slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, just like how we connected the previous rows. So to do this together, find that next stitch that we have, slip stitch into there. And now our third row is closed off and just to work our way up to the next row, we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then make our way down with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And from here, we're just gonna keep repeating these two rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. And I will meet you guys back so that we can seam our collar together. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up all of my back loop slip stitch rows. You don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base and now we're going to seam it together. So this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. And we're gonna to need to make sure that our work is flipped right side out because this seam that we're going to do is going to look just like any other back loop slip stitch row. So from where we're at, we're gonna start by inserting a hook into the corner stitch of the front and into the corner stitch of the back panel. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And now from here, we're going to find that first available stitch into the front panel, and we're going to be slip stitching into that front loop or the loop that's nearest to us. And then into the back panel, insert your hook into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. We should get three loops on our hook, so all we're gonna do is yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's how we do our first one. Let's do the next one as well. Insert your hook into that next stitch into the front panel, inserting only in through that front loop and then into the back panel, find that next stitch, and then insert only into that back loop. 
Shed out three loops again, so yarn over, pull through all three, and let's just do one more. Insert your hook into that next stitch's front loop into the front panel, and then into that next stitch's back loop into the back panel, yarn over, and pull through all three. And we're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left, and then do a chain up a one and cut. All right, so we are now ready to get started on the bottom. So what we're going to do is start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning that all of our seams are along the inside. And we're going to be inserting a hook into any stitch along the bottom of our piece. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're going to need to do a single crochet row across the bottom while doing some decreases because we need this to cinch. So what we're going to do is alternate between one single crochet and a decrease of two single crochets into every side row, so let's get that started. So start by inserting your hook into that same stitch that our chain one is in. We don't want to miss out on that side row. So we're going to single crochet once into there. And now from here we're going to find the next two available rows that we have and then decrease into there forming just one stitch on top. So this is my next side row right here. I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch. I'm going to yarn over, pull through. Once I have two loops on my hook, I'm going to find my next side row, which this is mine right here. Insert my hook into that side loop, yarn over, pull through. And once we have three loops on our hook, all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. That is our decrease. Now that's it. Let's do this again. Start by finding that next side row that we have. This is mine right here. So I'm going to insert my hook into there with just one single crochet. And then my next is going to be a decrease of two single crochets. So find that next side row. This is mine right here. I'm going to insert, pull through, and then find that next side row, which this is mine right here. Insert your hook into there. Pull through. Should have three loops on our hook, so all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're going to continue to alternate between one single crochet and then a decrease of two single crochet, making our way all the way around, and then slip stitch into that chain space. So now that our single crochet row is all finished up, we're now going to make a chain that is the length of our bottom band. So we're all going to start by making a chain the length that we want the rest of this top to be. And I want mine to be just about 14 inches or 36 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 60. And now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. And then into that chain that we blocked off for the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch, remembering that we're not going to tug too tightly after our stitch so that our next row isn't too difficult to work into. So just pull through everything and then move on. So basically the same way that we did the collar. So insert, yarn over, pull through, and then insert. Continue to do this until we reach the base. All right, so now that we have put one slip stitch into every chain, we're gonna need to connect it into the base. And it's gonna be done exactly the same way that we did the collar, so I'm just going to remind you guys how we're going to connect it and let you guys do the rest on your own. So what we're going to do is start by inserting your hook into that next available stitch into the base with a slip stitch to connect this first row. Then just to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. When we have that, we are going to flip our work. And then we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And we're just going to make our way all the way down at the end of the row, do a chain one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. And we're not going to have any increases or decreases, so keep repeating those two rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. And then I'll meet you guys back so you can seam it all up together. All right, so we have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, and now we're going to seam it. And this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so the same seam that we did for the collar. So since we already know how to do that, we're just going to do the first one together. We're going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of the front and the back panel. We're going to yarn over and pull through everything. And now we're going to find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. And then find the next stitch into the back panel and only insert in through that back loop. Shut up three loops on our hook, so all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And there's our first outside loop slip stitch seam. 
and we're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that our bottom is all seamed up, we can get started on our sleeves. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the stitch that's nearest to our side seam, making sure that our work is still flipped right side out. And now we're going to make an odd number chain the length that we want our sleeve to be, keeping in mind that we will have a cuff. Now I want my sleeve portion to be about three quarter length sleeves. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 39 and that is 10 inches or 25 centimeters. And now that we have our chain, we're going to do our trinity stitches back down towards the base. So just as a refresher, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a single crochet. So we're going to insert with one single crochet and just to do the first trinity stitch, we're going to insert our hook into that same stitch that our single crochet is into, yarn over, pull through, into that following chain, yarn over, pull through, and then into the chain after that as well, yarn over and pull through. Now that we have four loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, and then to close off the trinity stitch, do a chain one. Now continue to do our trinity stitches, making our way all the way down. When we have two stitches left right before the base, we're going to do the same last trinity stitch that we've been doing, so close it off with a single crochet. I'll meet you guys back once we're at that point, just to remind you guys how we're going to do that stitch. Alright, so we've made our way down with our trinity stitches. We have one, two stitches left, and we're just going to close off this row the same way that we've closed off everything else so far. So what we're going to do, after we've done our chain, we insert our hook into the last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, pull through, into that second to last chain that we have, pull through, and then also into that last chain, giving us four loops on our hook, so yarn over, pull through all four, and then since this is the last one, we're going to single crochet into that same last chain. So the same exact trinity stitch rows that we've been doing for the body. And now the only difference is that we're going to need to slip stitch it into the base. So start by finding that next available stitch into the base, insert your hook, and then we're going to yarn over, pull through everything to connect that first row. And while we have that, we're just going to work our way up to the next row, which is going to be slip stitching into that next stitch into the base, flipping our work, and then making our way down with our trinity stitches again. Now for the sleeves, we aren't going to have any increases or decreases. We're just going to do our trinity stitches, making our way back and forth, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did, and then I will meet you guys back when we don't have any more base stitches left to work into so that we can seam our sleeve together. Alright, so I've made my way all the way around with my trinity stitch rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, and now we're going to seam it. This seam is going to be a single crochet seam, so the same seams that we did for the side. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure the work is flipped wrong side out so that all of our seams can be along the same side. And then from there we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. From there we're going to pull our working yarn through, do a chain up of one to secure, and since we already know how to do this kind of seam, we're just going to do the first one together. So start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert your hook. And then we're going to find that next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet them together. And then that's it. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. Alright, so now that our sleeve is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our cuff. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our work is now flipped right side out. And we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of our side rows along the bottom of our sleeve. We're going to be inserting our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And just like how we did the bottom, we're going to be alternating between one single crochet into the first side row, and then a decrease of two into the next two. And I'm just going to get started on this next one off with you guys. So start by inserting your hook into that same stitch that our chain is coming out of, and insert with one single crochet. And then after that, we're going to do a decrease. So find the next side row and insert your hook into that top loop, yarn over, pull through. Find the next side row and insert your hook into that top loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three. And then into the next side row, there goes one single crochet, and then into the next two, 
a decrease of two single crochets. And we're going to keep alternating between one single crochet and a decrease of two single crochets, making our way all the way around and slip stitch into that chain space. All right, so now that our single crochet row is all finished up, we're now going to make a chain the length that we want our cuff to be. Now I want mine to be just about four inches or 10 centimeters. So I'm going to be making another chain of 18. And now that we have our chain, we're going to be blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So it's basically going to be the same way that we did the bottom and the collar. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything, making sure that we're not tugging too tightly on our working yarn. And I'll meet you back after we put one slip stitch into every chain. And now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to slip stitch it into the base. So start by finding that next available stitch into the base. Insert your hook into there with a slip stitch to close off this first row. And then to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch into that next stitch. Flip our work and we're going to do back loop slip stitch rows now. And there's not going to be any increasing or decreasing for the cuff. So continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, do a chain one, flip our work and then make the way back down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. And I'll meet you guys back when we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base so that we can seam it all up together. All right, so now that we have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, and now we're gonna seam it. And this seam is gonna be the same seam that we did for the bottom and for the collar. So an outside loop slip stitch seam. So let's just do the first one together. We're going to want to start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out. And we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And just to do the first one, we're going to insert our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel, into that front loop. And then finding that next stitch into the back panel, we're going to insert our hook into that back loop. Should have three loops on our hook. So from here, just yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. Do a chain up a one cut and then repeat everything that we just did here on the other side. All right, so we are back and both of our sleeves are all finished up and now we're all done. The last thing we're going to have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.